PlayStation have announced the new PS Plus games catalog editions for the month of May 2023, and they have gone a big 22 games, and we see everything from classics to PS5 releases. This, just an incredible month to be a member, and today I'm going to be running you through all of these new editions. Let's get started. My name's Alex, so this is PlayStation Corner, and if you do enjoy the video, consider subscribing. Helps out the channel a huge amount. We'll be starting today then with the PS Plus Extra and Premium games, and we'll cap off the video with the smaller selection of premium classic exclusives. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a PlayStation 5 exclusive that I picked up on release day and this game is a blast. The platforming is practically flawless, the combat is simple yet enjoyable, and the weapon selection is incredible. And my favourite, it is a gun that turns enemies into pixels. Now what really makes this game stand out though is the visuals. It's a true showcase of the PS5 hardware, particularly when you travel through the dimensional rifts to new locations. Just a creative game that everyone should experience. Humanity is also a massive release for the month because it's dropping day one. It's by far the strangest game on the list as well, but Humanity is a unique game that blends together puzzle solving and action platforming, where you play as a Shiba Inu tasked with commanding large crowds to overcome obstacles and enemies. That's going to be over 90 stages. The game also includes a stage creator for user made levels and optional PSVR 2 as well, which is the way I will be playing. Definitely excited for this, it seems to be just the right level of weirds. In Watch Dogs Legion, players build a resistance to take back a near future London from Downfall. The game allows you to recruit and play as anyone as the city, each with their own unique backstory, personality and skill set. The grandma was a popular choice for many who is surprisingly lethal. Now players can hack drones and use all sorts of gadgets to secure their victory. Just got a massive open world, I love the London setting featuring a whole host of iconic landmarks and yeah this is another one I picked up at launch personally and the PS5 upgrade is particularly nice, definitely a game as well that's going to keep you busy for a good while. Sukuna of Rice and Ruin is a game I played on the Switch, it's a unique one part side scrolling action game part basic farm sim where you set out growing rice. We take on the role of the harvest goddess who finds herself banished and now she must rediscover her birthright as the daughter of a warrior god. Expect here platforming, a whole lot of combat, and a solid selection of weapons to leverage. Definitely a fan of this game, it is well worth a look, and it just gets a good balance of challenging and moments of chill. Tomb Raider fans should be happy then as we get the entire reboot trilogy, that's Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well. There's not a huge amount I can really add here, a fantastic reimagining of a classic third person action adventure. Here they took some influence from Uncharted, which no doubt took cues from the original Tomb Raider, so basically things went full circle. Stunning looking games, the action is fantastic, and I really don't think the series has ever been better. Dishonored 2 was a game I played at launch, but it's been a good while. Now here we can choose to play as the Empress or the Royal Protector, and each has unique powers, weapons, and gadgets to take on more than a few enemies. You could go all out action. I'd recommend personally Stealth. That is where the series is at its very best. You can also find a Dishonored Death of the Outsider available for download in the month of May as well. It was originally intended to be DLC, but ended up getting a standalone release. And here we are one of the most notorious killers in this world. And yeah, we're basically out to take down a godlike figure known as the Outsider. Phimesia is an action RPG that takes influence from the Souls world, and I did a preview on this one for the channel. Find that in the pinned comment. Now, full of transparency, that was a sponsored video, and the opinions from most people I'd call them mixed, but I genuinely enjoyed it. For an indie spin on the formula, I really do think it was ambitious. The world is as dark as you would expect, and we control a character that can transform into a raven, just makes for a unique combination of melee and special abilities. I did feel a few locations could be a little difficult to navigate at times, but the action here kept me locked in. Naturally as well, just be warned it is a challenging game. Wolfenstein Youngblood then is a controversial entry for the series, for many it's going to be the weakest, understandably, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's maybe as bad as many did make out, it just had incredible to live up to, and the risks they took, they didn't always pay off. Now it's intended to be played in co-op, and it presents a small open world where we are looking for our missing father. Expect here though abilities, weapons, gadgets, just all sorts going on, and I think the big problem for me personally was enemies are bullet sponges, that's especially noticeable when you're playing in solo. Rune Factory 4 Special is one of my favourite entries for this series, it's a game you can play as you please. Some are going to focus on the slice of life farming at times, but this packs in a whole lot of exploration and combat as well, and that just really worked for me personally. You know, I get a little bored of farm sims, so that action really kind of elevates it for me. 
you know, going into it. It's not going to push your system visually, but yeah, I do think it is worth a look. I just think like many, I'm getting kind of genre fatigue here, but this one definitely still stands out. Rain World is another one I played on the Switch and I'm a big fan of this game. It got mixed reviews at launch. I put that down to the fact it can be incredibly difficult at points. As a five a platformer, you are a slug cat and basically if it moves in this world, it can kill you and that includes the title Rain. It's a unique combination of fluid platforming and stealth action and it looks stunning visually. It's topped off then with this incredible soundtrack and some 1600 screens to keep you busy. They've also expanded upon the original release as well since launch with a few patches and just updates over the years. The Evil Within 2 is a classic horror experience from the creator of Resident Evil and now this is a series I want to see return and I've featured it here on the channel more than a few times, specifically typically around the Halloween period. Imagine Resident Evil on acid, things just get incredibly surreal but the enemies are particularly creepy and this game will keep you guessing as you navigate this creepy world. The goal here is to save our daughter by entering this nightmarish alternate reality. I hope a fair few of you uncover the greatness of this game. Lake is a game I reviewed on Xbox Corner, I'll be linking that down below as it's the same build but this will not be for everyone. Come here if you want something that is slower paced with a likeable cast of characters. The idea is simple, we have a corporate job but to help our father, we head back home to help him with his delivery job. Now we need to drive around, deliver mail and just decide, is city life for us or do we want to maybe return back to this smaller town? Surprisingly engaging stuff and it's just a little different compared to most things out there. Bus Simulator 21 next stop definitely won't be a game for me personally, but maybe it will be for you. I think it's fair to say the name here says it all. I come here to enjoy some good old bus driving. It does promise a brand new mode and refinements for those that maybe know the series, and it appears you complete different missions. It has a PS5 upgrade as well, surprisingly, but I wouldn't go in expecting AAA tier visuals. Conan Exiles I've never played, I picked it up in a sale at one point and it went into the backlog near immediately. I can't commit to it because I know it's going to be absolutely massive. If you have played it let us know in the comments but this it's an online multiplayer survival game that promises exploration, crafting, combat and sorcery. It can be played in single player or co-op and I've heard mixed opinions over the years but my understanding is it was going from strength to strength. Soundfall is the final game for the PS Plus Extra and Essential update. We got a few classics still to go however and this one is a rhythm looter shooter. The idea here is you're transported to a musical world and you must figure out how to get home while defeating the evil forces of Discord. It has multiple playable characters and the soundtrack here it is actually solid. I played this on the Switch but the same issue will remain and that is the worlds have too many levels and the single player mode because of this gets a bit tedious just seeing the same things over and over. You're better off completing random quick missions just gives you a little bit more visual variety. Our PlayStation Plus Premium Classics for the month of May then and I've only played one of the four titles here and that is Ghostbusters the video game remastered. This comes highly recommended from me, it features the original cast and you are a new recruit alongside them. They just capture the world perfectly and the third person exploration and the combat it is just great fun. The remaining three then that's Pursuit Force which is an uprendered PSP game, an action driving one from what I can tell. Blade Dancer, another PSP game that's been uprendered. This one's a turn-based RPG, I'm going to be checking that one out. And then finally, Siphon Filter, Logan Shadow. I know it's a fantastic series and I played most of them, but this again was a PSP release that I never checked out, so I will be taking a look here. And that's the new releases, what will you be checking out this month? Let us know in the comments. I do think it's fair to say they went above and beyond for the month of May and it is just great to see this catalogue growing rapidly. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals weekly and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.